Hey everybody, I'm Ryan Doyle. This is The Mercury Table, and up top I am apologizing for my voice. I have been sick all week. I actually canceled both of my game nights, but I, I had to make this video. This felt very important because D&D &D is doomed. Or how I learned to stop worrying and love the inevitable collapse of my favorite pastime. On paper, Dungeons and Dragons was all set to have an incredible year. And next year was looking like it was going to be even better. Between the general nerd takeover of popular culture and a period of quarantine, sending everyone looking for new ways to have fun, and, you know, escape reality. There have never been more people playing d and We got a major motion picture in 2023, and it didn't suck. It was actually pretty damn good. 2024 is going to mark the 50th anniversary of the game and kick off with the release of a brand new edition. And it's actually lined up to coincide with the final season of the wildly popular Stranger Things, which will feature at least a version of Vecna. And it looks like Wizards of the Coast, the company who owns D&D today, realized that they can capitalize on that excitement yet again and will launch this new era or, or game, whatever the edition is going to be called, with a grand Vecna-themed adventure. Even talking about it now, a little part of me, like, still gets excited about what might have been. And maybe it's going to be great in, you know, the alternate timeline where Rich Uncle Pennybag still has his monocle and the cornucopia is still in the Fruit of the Loom logo. It was there. It's how I learned the word cornucopia as a child. But in this timeline, in our messed up version of reality, the bare-faced Monopoly man got too greedy and now Dungeons and Dragons is doomed. I'm not going to rehash the OGL war or talk about the Pinkerton incident beyond mentioning it or the, just like the whole past year of bad decisions from Hasbro. And I'm not going to do a whole video on all of the signposts pointing at a subscription based walled garden version of D&D &D Beyond filled with traps and microtransactions. You're all out of spell slots. Gain the benefits of a long rest instantly for $1.99. There are whole channels giving basically weekly recaps of all of the missteps and machinations that has driven Hasbro's stock price to drop to the lowest that it's been in at least five years. And those channels do way better than this one, folks. So you know what? From now on, here at the Verdigree table, it's going to be doom and gloom. No more feel-good advice to have more fun with your friends, get together with your family. We gotta get these numbers up, guys. Pour out your anonymous anger in the comments down below and, you know, rage at each other in the replies. Hit like or hit dislike. It doesn't matter as long as you are engaging because the algorithm doesn't care. Now, I'm kidding. <laughs> not about the algorithm not caring if it's making you feel worse as long as it's got your attention and making you feel something. That's that's for real. But I care about how you feel. And honestly, I care about how I feel. So, you know, blast the killers because today I feel like Mr. Brightside. Even if Dungeons and Dragons is doomed, we're going to be okay. D&D is way bigger than one company's intellectual property. It's a community. It's a whole ecosystem of interconnected communities. Corporate interests periodically forget that to their own peril. If Hasbro continues to alienate the community in misguided attempts to boost quarterly profits, they might be in trouble. But you and I, we're going to be fine. Hell, 
we might even be better for it. I wrote this whole like business history of Dungeons and Dragons and the apparent like cyclical nature of the additions with uh, surprisingly similar missteps during 4E leading to a pretty big disaster for the game. There was a funny line about Gary Gygax doing coke in Beverly Hills, but suffice it to say, even when the official game tanked. One, the next edition was the most successful ever. Two, it created an opening for Pathfinder, the biggest and arguably most viable alternative to D&D. And three, even in those dark days, people were still playing Dungeons and Dragons the whole time. So look, Despite the doomsayers or anybody's personal preferences, people are almost definitely going to be playing whatever the new version of the game is, and you're going to be able to find a seat at a table, especially if you are willing to sit behind the Dungeon Master screen. And if you hate the new version, you can keep playing 5th edition. No one can stop you. Honestly, depending on however different, whatever, 1D&D, 0.5, 6, 20, 24, whatever that's going to look like, I bet a lot of tables decide to finish their 5e campaigns before jumping into any of the new stuff anyway. You can just keep on keeping on. They're not going to send the Pinkertons after all of us. The one thing, though, is to make sure you have the physical books and not rely on digital versions that they can go in and change or phase out from the D&D Beyond, the VTT thing, whatever. I am a big fan of supporting my friendly local game shop, but honestly, I'm also a big fan of saving money sometimes, so I do both. Link below to the cheapest ways to buy the core books as well before they're gone. Honestly, one scenario that's seeming more and more likely to me is that this past year, and continuing to this very moment, has got Hasbro and Watsy scared to do anything, and then this new edition is going to be not all that different. And we're all going to have to decide if we want to shell out for new books that are going to end up a lot like the old books. So this is your reminder that you don't have to buy the shiny new thing. Now, if you like buying the shiny new thing, that's cool too. I get it. There's going to be a whole host of shiny new things real soon. And this is honestly the part that has me the most optimistic that all of the rumblings from Watsi have created space for a bunch of awesome games to come out. Would I bet money that any single one of them is going to, you know, displace Dungeons and Dragons for the top spot? No. But yeah, with the likes of Cobalt Press and MCDM and Critical Role throwing their hats in the ring and a bunch of other guys, there, there are definitely some contenders to at least stand beside Pathfinder and broaden people's horizons. It is going to be a veritable renaissance for tabletop role-playing games. We'll be doing a deep dive on some of these eventually, I promise, but from, from what I've seen so far, from Dungeon Coach's DC20, it is a very well thought out system. And even if the new Dungeons and Dragons remains the most popular, does not mean it will be the best of what's out there or the best fit for your particular table. And here's the thing I really want you to hear. Even if you're convinced, you're never going to get your table to play anything but whatever the standard Dungeons & Dragons is. You can take pieces from all of these other games. D&D has always been DIY, which is why Hasbro being doomed, D&D being doomed, doesn't mean that we're doomed. D&D is not doomed. The original game was a supplement to a homebrewed version of a different game kind of rule set that was stapled to a whole other game for overland travel. The secret is it's all Dungeons and Dragons at the end of the day. And I think we get a lot more flexibility from players 
if we talked about it that way more in general. Just about every table has their own little, you know, house rules and homebrew. Sometimes it's a dumb little thing, like doing roll-offs on initiative ties because it's way more fun than comparing dexterity scores. But sometimes it's doing way with initiative entirely because you think that's dumb, it's a waste of time, and you figured out a whole complex, better, or maybe simpler way to do things. Every table is different. Hell, every game session is different. Sometimes not even on purpose. Maybe we misinterpreted a new spell or forgot a particular, you know, niche case or something. Or maybe we adapted a little piece from somewhere else because we were plugging a hole, we were running a heist or a chase scene, and we needed some structure. What makes these games great is that we get to do that. It's built in. We can homebrew and hack to our heart's content, and nobody on Wall Street or Hasbro HQ is gonna stop us. If you've been with me for a while, you might know I'm half a hippie, peace, love, light, good vibes, but deep within the DNA of D&D is that DIY ethos of punk rock, crossbreed with the stick it to the man of metal. Satanic panic? Yeah, sure, whatever. Hail Satan. You know what, hey, if you're still here after learning this isn't rage bait, let me know in the comments what music is D&D to you. I mean, I will take links to, to lo-fi, tavern music, and your character's soundtrack for sure, but I'm curious what like the overarching band to write the the D and D theme song would be for you. You know, is is it Rush? I think Rush is a contender. All right, it's Saturday night. I have no date. A two liter bottle of Shasta and my all Rush mixtape. Let's rock. Though to be honest, I was always more of a Zeppelin guy. Jock rock my ass! Listen to those lyrics, man! It's all about love and longing! Yes, and, and hobbits too. Look, nobody knows what next year will bring for Dungeons and Dragons. Maybe the new books will sell better than ever, but even if it goes down as a historically bad year for D&D, it's going to be an awesome year for us. Here at the Vertigree Table, where we're going to prep and run games for friends and family every week, and for you, because even if D&D is doomed, you can have an awesome time around your tables as well. Do not forget that, because we are in a golden age of TTRPGs, my friends. These communities have never been bigger or broader or deeper. So get out there, be kind, and have fun.